Yeah, thank you very much. Is that working? Yes. Um, thank you very much for the kind introduction and yeah, for the kind invitation. It was most interesting and very instructing to learn about the interesting research you are conducting here in Spain about the women in ICT sector. Um, well, I gave my presentation the title Does ICT Suit Me? Why Girls Turn Away from Science Related Subject subjects and it's more the subtitle to be taken really seriously because I have to admit we have never really conducted any research but Mila knew that on ICT but on science and especially on physics but please judge whether some of our findings or most of our findings might be <coughs> transferable also to the sector of ICT and all technology or science related subjects. Um, because Germany and many other OECD countries, and also Spain, face many problems with recruiting enough graduates in science and engineering-related topics, um, usually also women and young females and girls are target of recruitment, and many initiatives have been started to trying to attract also more, more girls into the field of science and technology. But it is a problem um, that is not only centered on girls not wanting to enter this field. We should not forget that there are many reasons why also boys and young men do not enter the field of um, science and engineering at a rate that would be sufficient for the um, economy of OECD countries. So we conducted a research project <coughs> together with Bettina Hanover. It was called how the image of math and science affects the development of academic interest. And very, um, very early we, we concentrated mostly on, on the problems related to <laughs> physics, the school subject physics, as it, that is a subject that is very unpopular. Um, so many of our research has um, focused why teenagers, why adolescents of both sexes would not like to enter the field of science and technology. But as it is very um, clear in that field, um, many of our studies have focused also on the reasons why especially girls might find certain obstacles that boys might not find. So as a result, they are still underrepresented. And what our research is doing, well, we were searching for psychological explanations explanation why the science-rated school subjects are quite unpopular among German students. And I'm very much aware that this is not the only explanation, but we just try to um, work on one theoretical model that could make sense. So I want to show you a very small theoretical model how we link the development of academic interest at school to the development of identity of students' identity as a whole. In a nutshell, we assume <coughs> that to each of the subjects and domains that are instructed at school, also social meaning is attached. And that the student, if he or she decides to be interested in a domain, he or she does not only gather knowledge about this domain, yeah? not only um, <coughs> new knowledge that is related to physics or to chemistry, but also has to integrate the social meaning that is attached to that domain into his or her self-concept. And so the development of interest should be guided along this whether I would like to integrate certain aspects of the social meaning of physics, for example, into my self-concept or not. Um, we divided the social meaning of, of school subjects into <coughs> two parts. One we called just the image of science that is very, yeah, is researched very often. Um, this is what is associated with um, different school subjects, what is typical content of school subjects, what, is, uh, what are the associations that students have with a school subject. And on the other hand, the prototypes, that means typical persons to be found in that field, like typical representatives of physics, for example, as compared to typical representatives of humanities. So in a first step, we, I show you some results. Yes, yeah, somehow I was not allowed to talk for an hour and a half, but only 20 minutes. But um, I show you some results about the image of science. Um, this is a very full slide. Um, we did one 
a study I think that was kind of interesting because we used an instrument that comes from social psychology and that was developed to measure stereotyping of social groups um, and not the, only the conscious stereotyping but the implicit, automatic and non-conscious stereotyping of social groups. <coughs> we adapted that instrument in order to measure the image of different school subjects. It's a relative measure that has always uh, uh, yeah, two categories that are counterparts um, and it's a bit difficult for, you, for me now to explain in short the whole measurement procedure because it's quite a long procedure but it works with reaction times um, and measures the automatic, the non-consciously controlled associations between categories that are stored in memory. Um, in this we had an advantage um, as compared to using questionnaires when we use questionnaires or all, so qualitative research and asking students maybe what is the image of science, we could only find that they, yes, upon request, they are able to describe this image of science in a certain manner. But with this reaction time experiment, we could measure whether students would actually use, actually use the stereotypes or the <coughs> image of science whenever they are confronted with a cure stimulus pertaining to physics. So I show you here the results of the study. A bar that goes into the positive section, all of the bars are doing that, means that physics has been associated stronger with the categories that are underneath. Um, and what we see is um, that girls had stronger IAT effects than boys on all of our dimensions. I will go through that in more detail now. Um, we could show that girls associated more easily negative words as compared to positive words with physics as compared to English, that they associated more easily, more quickly words that refer to <coughs> other persons instead to themselves, that they associated more easily, more quickly words that referred to something that we called well, in the English version, then heteronomy, that is not a very common vocabulary, but it means like the opposite of self-realization, like that physics is perceived as a subject that does not allow for any self-realization, that it's perceived similar to math, um, like uh, having just a single right answer, something that is found in the, in the book of nature, that is not something that you can make up yourself, it allows not for any creativity, but is something to be learned by heart and just found or in the textbook or in the book of nature. Um, second, um, another very important aspect is that girls tended to associate on this reaction time task physics much more quicker with words referring to masculinity than to femininity and also much easier to words referring to difficulty. So we can say that the image of science, especially in the eyes of girls, but also in the eyes of boys, because we have not found any bars in, into the negative section, this would have been possible also, yeah, but they, they associate physics much more with allowing not any self-realization about being masculine topic and being a very difficult topic. Another aspect of the social meaning of science would be the prototypes. So um, for analyzing these prototypes, we refer to a, a theory also from social psychology that is the self-to-prototype matching approach from Niedenthal and colleagues. And they propose that whenever a person has to make an important decision where he or she can choose between different options, like what kind of car to buy, maybe, yeah? He or she imagines first the prototypical person driving each of the cars in question and then compares this typical driver of, well, a Mercedes or a Manta maybe, or these are not in use anymore, and um, yeah, and then compares this prototypical person with his or her, her own self-image and eventually chooses the options of the car where he or she sees the smallest difference between the own self-image and the prototype. And we thought, well, this will be, in academic specialization, also a crucial factor that we have students that imagine the typical student favorite physics, what is he like, and 
How is the typical student favoring English, for example, or German, and what am I like? And we thought that the image of a typical person liking science, the prototype of science, should be highly incompatible with the self-image of most adolescents because there are so few adolescents entering that field. As I'm on the conference dealing with ICT and women under representation, I want to show you some results that can underline that, um, that girls um, girl's self-image is especially bad, uh, has especially bad fit to the prototype life in science and especially on those aspects that are related to gender aspects of one's own identity. Yeah? For measuring that, we um, had students imagine a typical boy and also a typical girl um, whose favorite school subject is physics. And after they had imagined that person <coughs> vividly, yeah, the vivid image of that person, they were asked to rate on a list of trade adjectives what is typical for that person and what is not typical for that person. In this study, we used um, feminine and masculine trade adjectives like active and gentle. All these adjectives have, had been pre-tested whether they are perceived as being more typical for a boy or a girl because the normal reaction would be, oh God, yeah, a girl can be active and a boy can be gentle, but these are gender stereotypes. It doesn't mean that nobody can cross the border, but we had it pre-tested also with a teenage group, what they consider as being typically, more typical for a girl or for a boy. What we found, and we had them describe prototypes for the subject physics and compared to a prototype of the subject music that was kind of a girl's subject. So the question was, is the girl liking science perceived as being unfeminine? And yes, it was. When you look here at the, at the red bar and at the pink bar, this red bar is how a typical girl favoring physics is perceived by ninth graders. And this girl is perceived as possessing less feminine traits than a girl liking music and is also perceived as possessing more masculine traits than a girl liking music. For estimating further the mismatch between the self-image of our study participants and these prototypes, we had also to collect <laughs> self-descriptions using the same trade adjectives, so under the same list, they were describing also themselves. We then computed individual distance scores between the description of the prototype on the one hand and the own self-description. What we can see here for girls, that they had the largest distance um, to the, well, the most typical prototype that was in, in question here, that is the, the boy liking physics. They felt the largest distance to the boy liking physics, but also quite a large distance um, to the girl whose favorite subject is physics. A second question that we had in this study was, is a girl excelling in science perceived as being unpopular with boys? Because that would be a very important factor during these, ye these, these teenage years. So we asked these ninth graders whether they thought if a girl who was the best in the class and the boy who was the best in the class in our two target subjects physics and music, how popular they would be, probably, in their own class with the boys and with the girls. I mean, this is also maybe a complicate, um, complicated bar chart, but I just want to um, guide your attention to this, that a high-achieving girl in physics is perceived <laughs> as being rather unpopular on general, but especially with the girls, uh, especially with the boys in his or her class. A girl excelling in physics received the least favorite ratings and was perceived as being very unpopular with boys. So if we come back now to the score I've, I've shown you two slides before, the self to prototype matching score, yeah? whether the distance to the prototype and the self image was large or not. We use this score to predict the liking of the respective subject. And when we see in the first line, we see that it's the same 
a self to same sex uh, uh, prototype matching score, a very nice expression for physics, we see that the smaller the score is, yeah, the closer I feel the prototype to be to myself, the more I like um, physics, the negative correlation. The less similar students feel to a typical person representing physics, the less they like the subjects, and as we could find in other studies, the less they choose, in fact, a science-related profile at school. We did that with a uh, Dutch colleague. Um, and the less they want also to pursue a science-related career. So at that point, we found evidence that students seem to direct their liking of subjects by their perceived similarity to prototypical students favoring the subjects. And girls consider the typical person representing physics to be very dissimilar to their own self-image. In using a different instrument, we had students also rate typical teachers representing different subjects. And we found um, using an instrument um, <coughs> that the science teacher is perceived as being less attractive, the typical science teacher is perceived as being less attractive, as being less socially competent and integrated, <coughs> as being, though, more intelligent and more motivated, being more self-centered, but that was a kind of strange factor that emerged from our analysis, kind of a mixture of negative trade adjective, I would say, and to be perceived as being less creative and emotional and always, always male, almost always male. Yeah, we asked after they had described this prototype whether they have thought of a, of a woman teacher or a male teacher. And it was when physics was al almost always um, male and it is perceived this image of the typical physics teacher less similar to students self than the language teacher. So one important point why many girls, especially during the teenage girls, do not go into the science-related subject might be that they know it is a science, it is a masculine school subject, and being very interested in that would endanger their identity of being a typical girl and a right girl and a woman to be, and they could really show that they have understood what the gender roles are about and they could really show that they are a real girl by demonstrating they are not interested in these subjects. So if they avoid these subjects, they can communicate and stabilize their self-definition of becoming a real woman. And this is just the adolescent girl years where this is so very important. I mean, it's something that after the yeah, uh, gender role acquisition is something that usually well, it's not completed at the age of 20, but it is something that is very, very important during puberty years, and this is, this is also years where some specialization at school takes place. So what have we found? We have found that the image of science and the self-image of female adolescents <coughs> is not very compatible. What we would like to have is that it would be better compatible, that we would aim, we would like to aim at a greater fit between self-image of girls and the image of science and prototypes of science. The question is now, where and how can we intervene? In our model, there are two possibilities. We can, on the one hand, alter students' self, or we can alter the image of science or the prototypes of science. Both ways provide interesting <laughs> measures. I cannot go in detail, I think, to all to all our <laughs> interventions, but we might have some time to discuss. We did one study, one experiment, um, where we provided study participant with female role models as compared to male role models. Um, they had to read a text or about the physicist Jonathan, um, or about the physicist Johanna. It was exactly the same text, just the names had been altered or they read a text about Switzerland that was kind of the, yeah, the control condition, no physics involved at all. After that, they completed the implicit association test <coughs> whether physics was perceived <coughs> as being a masculine subject. So what we found is that after um, students had read the text about the physicist Johanna, the female physicist, the automatic association with masculinity was significantly lower yeah, in, 
even if they had physics dropped at school or if they had physics still taken as a course. If, when they read this text about a female role model, the automatic association was significantly lower. Another interesting point is that when they read this text about the male role model, the physicist Jonathan, the association of physics with masculinity did not become higher than as if they had just read a text about Switzerland. That means that physics equals male is really kind of a default default setting that is not even heightened if you again meet yeah, the 100,000 physicists that is a male person. We can also intervene at the other part, and I'm cutting that short, yeah, yeah, I won't tell you about that study, I will just tell you that we have conducted a study where we try to deactivate those aspects of girls' self-concept that are highly incompatible with physics. <coughs> um, this is recently now in the, in the British, British Journal of um, educational psychology, it's when being a girl matters less, accessibility of gender-related self-knowledge in single sex and co-educational classes and its impact on students' physics-related self-concept of ability. Not a very nice title only. We, we wanted to call it when girls forget they are girls and the reverse said, well, this is a rather flippy, flappant title or something. Um, but um, that might be also interesting for the girls' computer clubs that we, uh, we found that in single sex Single-sex groupings, all that self-knowledge that is related to one's being a girl was less accessible. And yeah, people tend to have not only a very limited self-knowledge, but we have vast self-knowledge. We don't, do not consider ourselves all the time as being female, for example. We might, in some context, think we are a researcher or an IT professional or, yeah, or something else. And we found that in single-sex group, this accessibility of gender-related knowledge was diminished, and this was related to girls' motivation to pursue physics. And I'm not showing you this, but I'm showing you the summary as the last slide. So let me sum up our findings. Students used their academic interests and specialization also as a means to regulate and demonstrate their identity. Not only girls, but also many teenage boys who have interest in science for motives and reasons that are true for both sexes. However, when focusing on gender-related aspects of identity, only girls' gender identity clashes with the image of the typical person representing science. The subject physics is perceived as a masculine subject, and a girl liking or excelling in physics is perceived to be unfeminine and as being unpopular with boys. On average, girls consider the typical person representing physics to be very dissimilar to their self-image, and the larger they consider the difference between their self-image and the prototype, the less they like the subject, the less they choose a science-related profile at school, and the less they want to pursue a science-related career. Providing female role models is one way to alter the image of science as an unfeminine subject. And in single-sex groups, gender-related self-knowledge is less accessible. This leads to a better compatibility between girls' situationally activated identity, that is, yeah, in that very moment, and a stereotypically male domain like physics, causing higher motivation and competency beliefs related to physics. So if anybody wants to get more details about the studies in order to be able to comprehend them Fully, because I am aware that might not have been possible in this short time. I will very, very voluntarily send any papers. We have, we have no Spanish papers. We have several German papers, but we also have several English papers on our studies, and I would, yeah, send them. So thank you for the attention. Thank you, Ursula.